Are you familiar with yin and yang? You know, the Chinese concept of dark and light? Well, according to this Chinese cosmology, the universe arose out of a primary chaos of material energy organized into the cycles of yin and yang. Now imagine the ASEAN region as a small universe. It was once a peaceful region devoid of any communist nuisance. Then China happened. And we all know what happens to any region when it gets kissed by Chinese presence. Chaos prevails. Chaos prevails and people are brainwashed, trapped in sneaky schemes, and eventually their souls are brought in by the Chinese Communist Party. China managed to infiltrate ASEAN, but some forces in ASEAN absolutely despise the rogue communist nation. And one such nation is Indonesia. Indonesia has had enough, and it is rallying other anti-China nations in the ASEAN to take on the belligerent and aggressive China. And this move may divide the ASEAN into two halves. One half that already sold its soul to China, and the other one headed by Indonesia that simply does not want to bow down to Xi Jinping. So what happened and what is going on? Well, let's find out. Hi and welcome. You're watching TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm Siddharth, your host. In this video, I will talk about ASEAN heading for a major split right in the middle, thanks to Indonesia's sudden moves. Let's begin. Indonesia, the largest country in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN, is looking to punish China and is leading the charge against the communist nation even if it comes at the cost of a major split in the regional body right in the middle. Indonesia has invited Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore and Vietnam to convene next year as a part of the ASEAN Coast Guard Forum, which met virtually in October. Vice Admiral Ahn Kurnia, Chief of Indonesian Maritime Security Agency Bakamla said, We will share experiences on how to respond in the field when we face the same disturbance in a veiled reference to China. This divides the ASEAN right from the middle. If you look at this map, all the southern and eastern ASEAN countries are coming together in a group, leaving apart Laos, Myanmar, Thailand and Cambodia. So why is Indonesia convening an anti-China Coast Guard forum? Well, Indonesia has been getting damn angry about Chinese aggression of late. Indonesia is not a part of the South China Sea dispute. But Beijing says its nine-dashed line covers the exclusive economic zone or EEZ of Indonesia's Natuna Islands. China goes as far as asking Indonesia to not drill in its continental shelf in the North Natuna Sea because, well, the CCP says that it owns this territory. China was actually trying to restrain Indonesia from drilling its own oil and natural gas. But a gutsy Indonesia went ahead with a six-month drilling project anyway that was completed last month. And now Indonesia's Bakamla is proudly claiming a grand victory over the Chinese. Now, Indonesia is upping the ante. It thinks enough of China's nonsense. Let's just bring together all the countries that face Chinese bullying and combine their powers. Well, I just told you that Indonesia hates China over the Natuna island dispute. But Malaysia, Vietnam and the Philippines are no fans of China either. Vietnam is in fact the biggest power rivaling China within ASEAN. It had defeated China in the 1979 war and is today getting a lot closer to anti-China powers like India and Japan. It is stealing a number of businesses from China and impoverishing the communist nation. Malaysia and the Philippines both share contentious South China Sea disputes with China. China already controls the Scarborough Shoal, which is a disputed feature in the South China Sea, claimed by both Beijing and Manila. Presently, Chinese maritime militias are also eyeing Witsun Ri, a geographical feature in Filipino waters, which is also being claimed by China. Malaysia, on the other hand, is itself a victim of Chinese bullying. Chinese Coast Guard ships harass Malaysian oil and gas vessels operating in their own waters. Well, because the CCP claims Malaysian territory also says that Malaysia can't drill there. Brunei, a tiny sultanate, where China has invested extensively, might seem like a weak link. But last year, Brunei was appointed as the ASEAN chair and the country showed the ability to mobilize anti-China opinion over the South China Sea disputes. And finally, Singapore is the power expected to lead the anti-China tirade within the ASEAN. As a stable political regime and a strong economy, Singapore is the perfect candidate to take ASEAN forward. And also the country doesn't have any disputes with any other ASEAN countries, which allows it to take on China without any baggage. As Indonesia brings together all anti-China forces, it is the China-Cambodia nexus that gets undermined. China was already controlling the ASEAN through its longtime ally Cambodia, which is presently functioning as the ASEAN chair. On China's behest, Cambodia has even allowed Myanmar's military junta to become a part of ASEAN and carry on its vindictive campaign against the former state councillor of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi. Cambodia was compromising ASEAN in face of Chinese aggression. But now, Indonesia and other China haters have decided that they will form an exclusive club that will work against Beijing regardless of Cambodia's chairmanship of the ASEAN. The ASEAN is headed for a major split into two halves, one that is led by Indonesia 
and seeks to contain China. And the other one led by Cambodia that seeks to appease the red rogue nation of China.